The idea for this guide came to me very suddenly when producing the insanity guide for whatever reason, and I thought, yeah, sure, why not? Because sleeping is an interesting mechanic, and unfortunately, it's one we have never really talked about, so I guess here we go. We'll focus on player-based sleeping mechanics overall, however, do expect some quick mob ones at the end here. But let's get to it. However, first things first, remember, this is Don't Starve Together, everyone, not Don't Starve. In the latter, most of what you will see here today instantly skips the times of day, while in Don't Starve Together, time doesn't skip at all. The benefits here, though, are the gradual impact on the stats that sleep will have, and the fact that we are immune to Charlie while catching some of these Zs. And, you know, also the fact that you can just stop sleeping whenever you want instead of, again, just instantly teleporting to the morning. First up, though, is the very likely uncomfortable straw roll, crafted via a science machine with but six grass and a single rope. Note, it's a one-use only item, so use it wisely. But come dusk or night, you can lay one out to get a snooze in, and again, if this was solo don't starve, you would instantly wake up in the morning, and your hunger would be down 75 points, while your sanity would have gained 33. But in Don't Starve Together, things happen over time. And a straw roll restores less than the whopping one sanity per second, but will take one hunger per second along the way. And don't worry, if your hunger reaches zero, by the way, your character will just wake up automatically when that happens. Now that's pretty worthless if I'm honest, but the fur roll is far more interesting. Crafted via an alchemy engine with a straw roll and then some bunny puffs thrown into the mix, this sleeping bag will be more efficient, have three uses total, and add even additional bonuses to boot. These being its temperature effects. A fur roll will increase your temperature by one degree every second if it's under 30 degrees overall, and it will decrease your temperature by the same rate if your overall temperature is higher than 45 degrees total. It's nice, but I would not rely on it come the appropriate seasons, as weather effects will, well, kinda still affect you. But as for the status effects of this fuzzy and warm roll, it'll restore one sanity and one health per second at the cost of the same one hunger per second. It's not bad at all. But there's always a better option. And of course, that would be the tent, Lady and Germs. A structure so useful, it is a shame that I use it more for decoration than what it should be being used for. And that being sleep, duh. The tent restores one sanity and two health per second at the cost of one hunger per second. It is absolutely stellar. But that is not all, folks. Tents also reduce your wetness by one per second while protecting against additional rainfall and even the freezing cold of winter if you're really, really desperate. And just note that it will increase your temperature by one per second up to 40 degrees overall to begin with. Yes, tents are phenomenal, but only have six uses, so be very mindful there. Plus, you must have at least 26 hunger in order to use them in the first place. And this kind of leads me to something very obvious, but it's something still to be noted anyways. The game will not let you sleep with danger nearby. And it's not like that would be a good idea regardless, but what have you. Ah yes, the siesta lean-to. A forgotten structure, sadly, left behind because tents are too dang good. But perhaps today will have you reconsider that fact. At least... I hope so, because unlike everything that came before it, the Siesta Lean 2 allows us to take an afternoon nap, everyone, aka we can sleep during the day, and you know what? We can even escape the heat while we're at it as well. The Siesta Lean 2 also reduces our wetness by one per second, similar to the tent, however these structures lower our temperature by one per second if we sit at 40 degrees and above. It is very, very nice. But not only that, siestas restore one sanity and two health per second, like a tent, but only drain 0.33 hunger per second along the way, making them much more efficient in the long run. 
absolutely amazing. Note though, that they too only have six uses overall. But before we go, let's talk how the sleeping effect goes beyond these items and structures, like with mandrakes for example. Find one, eat or cook one, and then you'll plop down for a quick nap in no time. That and most other players slash mobs around you too. We will not see any of these stat regens we've been seeing, but that's really not what I'm concerned about with here today. Let's talk about this little state here. Grogginess. Like naughtiness, grogginess is a very small hidden mechanic that has an impact on our overall speed depending on its level. Listen to this. If you go over three grogginess, that's when you sleep. And if you still have grogginess when you wake up, that is when you're gonna be slowed down. That is the bare minimum gist of it, really. But take a look at this table here to see what will give you grogginess, and you'll kind of find there really isn't much. That's why this is such a small mechanic. But do know, grogginess will drain by 0.33 per second. However, just a couple more things to note. Wickerbottom cannot sleep, therefore cannot take advantage of anything that we have discussed here today. That being said, she can still get quote unquote knocked out, and the end results are pretty darn horrifying. So shield your eyes, kids. Oh, and grogginess will still follow too, mind you. And finally, be mindful of Berger outside of Autumn. His yawning can and will put most anything to sleep in a very wide radius. And this could lead to plenty of potential bad news beard situations. Also, it's just really freaking annoying to deal with. Like, really annoying. But there you have it, everyone. A pretty quick rundown on a mechanic that could very well go unnoticed or maybe even underappreciated, but can really be quite handy to know about along the way. And yes, we could talk about pan flutes, sleep darts, and even the revival mechanics of life-giving amulets when it comes to the sleeping of mobs, but that really ain't much. It's not really worth it beyond just getting more time to run away. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Hopefully we all feel a bit more restful after today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.